about 22 on their feet. That tells me we have a problem with embarrassment about who we are. And we cannot have an apostolic revival until we shake off the shame and become excited about being a born again, Holy Ghost filled, Jesus name, holy separated person. Waiting on Samson. Amen. Yeah. I don't want to. At the risk of sounding whatever, arrogant or pretentious, my daughter started high school this year in a brand new school in a brand new city. I was more scared than she was. I embarrassed the fire her because I walked her to her locker in high school. <laughs> Okay, baby. It used to be when I walked her to school, I could whip everybody there, but I looked at some big old boys in there and I was thinking, I'll never let them know it, but I'm not sure I can take many of these. <laughs> and she told me that her Spanish teacher came up to her and said, Are you Pentecostal? And she said, I am. She says, Is that why you wear your skirts and you don't cut your hair? She said, It is. She said, well, does anybody at the school make fun of you because of that? And my daughter looked at her like, have you lost your mind, man? And my daughter has this unrehearsed sense about that she's not the one that's different. All right. Everybody else might be different, but she's right. When you know you're right, you can walk up to anybody and say, why don't you come to church Sunday? When you know you're right, that's why some of our youth groups aren't broken. That's why some of our churches have mellowed out. It's because somewhere in the back of our mind, we're not completely convinced that we are right. But God sent a preacher to section I to remind you, we are right. And we got to invite whosoever will let them come, let them come. Now those last 10 minutes were not in my notes, but I just felt that prompting in the Holy Ghost. We need to grab a hold of this. There needs to be a holy awakening of who we are. Amen. Not an H-O-L-Y, a W-H-O-L-L-Y, -L -L a complete awakening. Yes. And Samson lived that separated life. He was ashamed of it. And it was that separation that gave him his power. And his parents understood the volume of the vow. They knew why they wanted him to live that way because they knew God had plans for him. If God has plans for you, the devil has problems with you. His parents were not trying to punish him. His parents were not trying to make him different. His parents were not trying to make him an easy target at school. They understood that God had purpose on his life. Therefore, Samson, things are different at our house. That's right. That's right. Amen. Samson, I know you may not understand all of this right now. But in order to do supernatural things, you can't be like everybody else. That's right. That's right. You can't go where everybody else is going. Right. You can't talk like everybody else is talking. Right. Things that other folks can touch, they're off limits to you. Preach it. Samson, if you want to make a difference, you got to be different. You can't make a difference and be like everybody else. And all God was saying was, as long as you're Samson, as long as your earlobes are your earlobes, as long as your fingerprints are your fingerprints, as long as you're doing what I've called you to do, then I'll be God. 
the moment you cease being Samson, I'm going to cease being God. So young people, if we're not who we are supposed to be, then God can never be who he is supposed to be. And as long as he was separated, he was used mightily of God. His successes were connected with the separation. The key word is success, all right? When I point at you, I want you to shout it. Judges chapter 14, the Spirit of the Lord came on him, and he slew a lion with his bare hands. Success. Judges chapter 14, verse 19, the Spirit of the Lord came on him, and he killed 30 men who was trying to kill him. Success. Judges 15, 15, he found the jawbone of a donkey and killed a thousand men. Success. Judges 15, 19, the Lord supplied water out of nothing to help restore and revive Samson. Success. You hear this little country preacher tonight, if we will remain separated, then God will give us great victories. If you will remain separated, you can destroy every lion that's trying to destroy you. If you are remain separated, you can overcome every enemy that's overcoming you. Our young people ought to be the smartest people at their schools. We ought to be the best employees on the job. You ought to strive to be the best saint that you can be. And we can do that and remain apostolic and remain holy and remain separated. You can leave this service tonight and be a spiritual success. You will live for God and you will be a witness. And you can win that soul and you can start that ministry and you can teach that Bible study. God wants his people to be successful. Those were his successes, but now let's be fair and talk about some of the struggles. Because you cannot reach the pinnacle of success without also going through your fair share of struggles. Yes. And, and, and I or any other preacher would be lying to you if they said, after we pray for you tonight, you'll never have another struggle. That is a lie. Yes. Struggles will make us stumble. And I want you to hear me and I want you to try to grab this and I'm running out of time and I don't have time to footnote everything and that's a problem with my type of preaching. But... Sinners don't struggle. They sin. I mean, that's kind of what they do. When you were a sinner, it wasn't hard to do. You didn't struggle to do it. You just did it. Sinners don't struggle. They sin. People who don't live for God, they don't struggle with the things we struggle with because... They're sinners. They sin, but they don't struggle. But people who are trying to be a spiritual success, we struggle. I wonder if anybody could admit tonight that you've ever had some struggles. Amen. Some of you struggle with lying. <laughs> but according to this book, it says, if we sin, we have an advocate Amen. with the Father. And He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. According to this book, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, all things become new. According to this book, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who walk in Christ Jesus. us. Guilt and condemnation. And we're condemned because of some struggle that we're in. And we want to worship, but we feel like a hypocrite. And the devil reminds us, mm -mm, don't, don't clap. I saw what you did. Don't you go. <laughs> How dare you stand up right there. You are the biggest hypocrite in this place. If I was you, I would never come back to church. That's right. That's right. And so because of all that guilt and condemnation, we quit worshiping, we quit praying, we quit advancing, or we just learn how to pretend. But tonight... It's time to get that devil of condemnation off of our back. Yes. And put him under our feet. 
and live for God with a fresh dose of commitment, awareness, and renewal. Yes, we may have struggled, but I refuse to let my struggle cause me to struggle the rest of my life. Rejoice not against me, oh my enemy, when I fall. I'm going to get back up. I want to preach to the young people tonight and tell you God's going to help you overcome some struggle. It's time for freedom. It's time for repentance. You can overcome that pornography issue. You can be delivered from that eating disorder. You don't have to be depressed. It's time to learn how to pray and worship and witness. Quit letting your struggle rob you of your successes. You can be an overcome. So where did Samson, I mean, how did he go from this success to these struggles? Where, where did the struggles come from? I'll tell you where the struggle. The struggle started in Judges chapter 14 and verse 1. In Judges 14 and 1, he sees a girl. And in verse 2, he friends her on Facebook. If you look up the Hebrew word, it's a Hebrew word, and it means friending on Facebook. Or something close to that, I think. Is what it so he sees a girl in verse 1. In verse 2, he makes up his mind. She's the one for him. It's going to get quiet in here. But I've been a pastor for a little while now, going on 14, 15 years. And I've learned that the quieter it gets, the better the preaching is. In verse 3, mom and dad says, uh, Samson, I don't, I don't think she's the one you ought to be dating. She don't go to our kind of church. Right. And Samson said, oh no, I know more than you. I'm in love. I know what my heart says. Oh Lord. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever thought that? Your heart's deceitful. It's wicked. Every Samson was persistent. Get her for me. Are you with me? Anytime you rebel against the authority in your life, whether it be your parents or your pastor, you're setting yourself up for struggles and failures. Amen. That's right. Matter of fact, I'm just going to go ahead and be real old fashioned for a few minutes here. You shouldn't date anybody that isn't in church. No ifs. And or buts about it. No churching, no dating. We do not believe in flirt to convert. Not here, not today, not now. I don't care how pretty they are. I don't care how big his muscles are. I don't care how good she can sing. I don't care how hard he works. If they're not in church, you have no business getting connected. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And I'll just throw this in for free. If your parents or pastor hesitates about anyone that you're dating, I mean, if they even hiccup, if they have a, just a hesitate, a concern, a question, Break up with them immediately. Preach it! Preach it! Let me rephrase it. Break up with the guy or the girl immediately, not your mom and dad. Don't break up with them. Break up with them. If, your, if your pastor has an issue with you, and I don't care how much you think you love them, I don't care what all y'all got playing. Go ahead, go ahead. I don't even care what all y'all have done. When you end up divorced, the same parents you alienated yourself from yeah. are going to be the same ones that you want to move back in and live in their basement. <laughs> it's 
standing at the door in my churchy no duty. No obey, no obey. It. That was funny, I just thought of that. That was funny. <laughs> Key word is struggle. I'm gonna point out to what you shout. He's attracted to a woman he should have never been attracted to. No, just shout struggle. He ignores the voice of authority in his life. Struggle! He married a lady he should have never married. Struggle! He wasn't supposed to drink strong drink, but yet he's hanging out near a vineyard. Uh -oh. Then ended up in a harlot's house. Struggle! And you're thinking, well, I'll never do that. You're lying. Because you don't know what you would do. Put in the right, or should I say wrong, situation. Yes. You start hanging out in vineyards, you will drink. You start flirting with worldly women or carnal men, you will go too far. You start missing church and you will become carnal. The key is to walk in the spirit. Samson used the spirit like a spare tire. But if we're walking in the spirit, the spirit will never lead us into temptation. Paul said if we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's our problem in this generation. We don't walk in the spirit. We stroll with it on Sunday, but we don't walk with it on Monday. When you walk with it, it's a lifestyle. Take up your cross daily. Tonight's not about a stroll. I'll get, I'll get crucified for saying this, but tonight isn't even about to see how many we can pray through. Tonight I want to know how many can stay through and still be living for God in six months. And because Samson can never get his lust under control, because he can never get his struggles under control, he goes into a harlot's house somehow in God's mercy and grace still anoints him and blesses him with supernatural strength to get up and get out. Now listen to me. There's a fine line between struggles and stupidity. We are going to all struggle. But we cannot let our struggles mature like Samson did into stupidity. Yes. The word stupid means given to unintelligent decisions. The church can handle your successes. The pastor can help you through your struggles. But even God can't do anything with stupid. There's, a, there's an old saying that says you can't fix stupid. I'd like to disagree with that for a minute and tell you, you can fix anything if you want to. Yeah. Look at the person next to you and say, don't be stupid. <laughs> you know you're dying to. Look at the next person. Tell them to. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Don't do it. And I'm sorry on a Friday night getting up in your face tonight, but the truth of the matter is, there's too many people doing too much stupid stuff. As a matter of fact, stupid seems to be the new fad. Does this make me look stupid? Yes, I'll take two of them, please. <laughs> Lady Gang Gang, stupid. Miley <laughs> Cyrus, stupid. Jonas Brothers, stupid. Lindsay Lohan, stupid, 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 stupid. Beaver Fever, stupid. We've got young people listening to stupid music, watching stupid shows, dating stupid people, and wearing stupid clothes. But God sent a preacher here to tell you it's time to put a stop to stupid. We are not to be ignorant of the devil's devices. You need to make up in your mind, I'm leaving this service, and I'm not going to let my struggle push me to a level of stupidity, and I'm not going to walk away from Key word is stupid, but I point at you, I want you to shout stupid, all right? Falls in love with Delilah now. 
she said, tell me, tell me how you get your strength. And he lies to her and calls in a bunch of men. They beat him up. Puts his head right back in her lap. Repeat the next process. Do it again. She must have been one good looking. <laughs> Falls in love with a lady by the name of Delilah. <laughs> I just made that up. Now you would think that Delilah's name, and I'm coming too close, but you would think that Delilah's name would have meant devilish, or demon, or lady of the night. <laughs> Delilah's name, if you look it up, I was teasing while ago about the Hebrew, but if you really look this up, Delilah's name just means feeble or weak. So how is it that a weak woman was able to destroy a strong man? How is it, young person, that a weak world is able to destroy a strong church. Amen. How is it that a weak devil, and I know he's weak because Isaiah said, is this the man that made the earth tremble? How is it that a weak devil is able to destroy a strong young person? See, she was paid by the world. She was paid by the Philistines to make him like her. Now, now I know, I know, I know, I know in our Sunday school classes we teach this probably a little wrong. We teach Samson looking like some muscle bound freak. But if he looked like that, she would have never said, Where do you get your strength? That's good, that's good. Let me tell you what, let me introduce you to what Samson looked like. <laughs> a little longer hair, but this is Samson. And it drove her crazy. Yes. That he looked like that and could be used by God like this. Amen. 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 And it drives the devil crazy that all you got is a youth group of 10, but somehow you still have power. It drives the devil crazy that you got a church of 50, but you act like you got a church of 5,000, and the devil is wondering, where do they get that power? Let me tell you something. Get your head out of the lap of this world. Get your head out of that weak woman's lap. a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Somebody ought to clap their hands to the Lord and give them a shout of praise. Let's all stand. Nazarite vow is voluntary separation. Samson did it because mom and daddy told him to do it. But doing it like that, he hung out in vineyards. He flirted with folks he shouldn't have flirted with. Now we fast forward. He's bound. 
His eyes are plucked out. He's in prison. And he begins to pray. He begins to repent. God, I was birthed to begin to do something great. And look at me. You were birthed to do something great. Samson had a little talk with the Lord. Judges chapter 16, verse 22, one of the most powerful scriptures in all the Bible. How be it? <laughs> that the hair of his head began to grow again. The thing he got stupid and cut off. The thing that he allowed his struggles to overtake him and he lost it. God says, Samson, one more time. I'm going to touch you again. Wouldn't it be an awesome testimony to walk out here tonight and for some youth group to say, how be it that our prayer life began to grow again? How be it that my worship, my Bible reading, hair began to grow in verse 22 and verse 28. Samson said, oh Lord, remember me. Samson did it because mom and daddy said do it until he's sitting in the prison. And for the first time, he says, God, I want to do this on my own. And they let him. And, and I know, I know, I know, I know sometimes in our mind we, we, we envision this very strong man. Almost like elastic man. We, we, we envision two big pillars across the platform and like he just stretched led him to two pillars and this is what hit me this week the two pillars that held the enemy's house up was close enough to each other that he could put both hands on them that's what I felt the Holy Ghost tell me this week the thing that's propping up your enemy's house is close enough to you that you can put both hands on them tonight Samson said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to live for God. Put his hands on the pillars of the thing that was propping up the enemy's house. And the Lord strengthened him. And that house fell. Samson died. But the Bible says in his death, he destroyed more than he ever did in his life. I'm not asking anybody to die physically tonight, but if some of you would grab a hold of those pillars, problem, and if you would surrender and repent, that's death. And if you would become a living sacrifice and die out, you can be more victorious tonight, dead, than you could have ever been out there. Some of you are thinking, man, I'd love to preach. I'd love to be used by God. I would love, but I don't come from the right family. In the Old Testament, you had to be born in the right family to do temple work. Are you ready for this? I found... In the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, it says this. The voluntary swearing of a lifetime oath to the Nazarite vow allowed men to serve God without the necessary bloodline of Aaron to link them to ministerial service. Amen. Amen. Did you catch it? All you had to do was voluntarily say, God, I'll live holy and I'll live separate.